This is a narration by Tales of Terror. There was a noise at the door, then a shoving. Muffled shouting came from outside. Aha! As I foresaw, the shining sons of the angel come. Kurz picked Ascalon up. His spare frame hid enormous strength, and he carried the blood angel like a doll. Time to go. Time to finish our little chat. Now I come to the meat of it. Tell me, brother, I saw a great vision of you at Cygnus. I saw what happened there. I heard the howls of the Neverborn as you threw them back into the warp. That was before you came here. There is no time, fool. The warp showed me that everything happens at once. Don't you see? That is how we see. Time is a book to be read at will. Tell me, why did you not turn? You could have snuffed Horus out like a candle. They offered you the galaxy as a plaything. You overstate their offer. I will not be a slave. You are a slave. A slave to father's will and a slave to fate. Our only choice is what manner of slavery we shall embrace. And even that choice is an illusion. There is always a choice. There never is a choice, spat Kurz. Everything goes back to the beginning. Round and round and round and round and round. Clack, clack, clack. All the little cogs. Turning, 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 turning. The hammering from outside changed. Heavy combat weapons were being employed against the door. A bone-shaking crunching that boomed loudly with every dent put into the metal. Do you not think it should have been you? Should father have chosen you as war master, do you think? What? said Sanguinius incredulously. It's a fair question, protested Kurz. Rabute sees fit to declare you emperor. Do you not think the emperor could not have seen fit to declare you war master? You see, although I see your actions before you do, our shared abilities makes reading your intentions so very hard. Your fate is your fate, not mine, and I am genuinely curious. To tell you the truth, <laughs> he laughed apologetically. It is killing me. I have to know. It should not have been me, said Sanguinius. I am not perfect. I am not worthy. Kurz burst out laughing, so hard he could not control himself. His rank breath choked the room. I am sorry. I am sorry. That is so marvellous. If you were not worthy, then what about Horus? <laughs> He laughed again. I would have been tested as he has been tested. I am glad I did not have to risk failure. Then prove it. Prove your loyalty to dear father. Kurz wiped tears of mirth from his face. They left tracks in the filth. Kill me. I won't stop you. Let it be a test. I say that I shall die by father's command. 
Father is dead. Kurz frowned for a moment, confusion flickering across his gaunt features. My future cannot be changed, for that is the future, and the future is as dead as the past. You say otherwise. If my conviction is incorrect, then you can change it right now. Slay me. I will not hinder you. Sanguinius hefted his sword. For a moment, they stared at each other. Kurz stood with his arms wide open. The night haunter tensed in anticipation. Do it! Run me through with your sword, you coward! Do what Vulcan, the lion, and Dalrabute could not. Kill the monster and prove your worth. Sanguinius ran at his brother, his sword raised. A look of joy crossed Kurz's face. The angel's sword descended in a blurring arc and stopped a hand's breadth from the crown of Kurz's head. The steel hummed at its sudden arresting. Something had stayed Sanguinius's hand. He stepped back then reversed and sheathed his weapon. Kurz's eyes snapped open. His face twisted with fury and despair. I will not do it, said Sanguinius. Letting you live is punishment enough. Do not lie to me, screamed Kurz. This is not about punishment. I thought we were being honest with each other. There is always hope, brother. Even for you. Hope is an empty dream, said Kurz honestly. The unhealthy fervour left his face, taking the madness from his eyes. Without the energy of his broken mind, he seemed diminished and sad. He ran a dirty finger along the pinions of Sanguinius's wing, a madman touching something he believed too wonderful to be real. The limb twitched angrily, and Kurz snatched his hand back. I sincerely wish there were hope, but that I cannot believe. Sanguinius held out his hand to his brother. You are a shadow of what you should have been, Conrad. In spite of everything, I pity you. Come with me. It is not too late. We can heal you, and you might be greater. Kurz's face crumpled, and the spark of insanity ignited in him again. Pity? I do not need your pity. Sanguinius, Sanguinius, fairest of us all, when will you learn? The pounding on the door grew louder. The metal buckled. Kurz glanced at it, then back at the angel. He backed away, held Ascolon up by the arm and grinned. No matter how hard we wish otherwise, in the end, there is only chaos. He raised his other hand. He was nearing the outer wall, closest to the doorway. You promised you would not harm him. We are like father in so many ways. His eyes glinted. Just like him, I lied to you.